everyone to another episode of the Adeptus Ridiculous Podcast. My name is DK Diamantes. My co-host is Bricky. Our super special co-co-host today is Kiriath, but we'll get into all that in just a second. If you enjoy today's episode of the podcast, consider supporting us over at patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous, where you can get access to our Discord, uh, bloopers if they happen, some sick posters at the $15 tier, and if we hit 17 k on the patreon uh 70k a month uh we'll do an episode on the dornian heresy what book are we reading and where can people pick up some sick ridiculous merch well we're reading a uh, betrayer next mm. due to our thorough enjoyment of the first heretic which i'm sure we will discuss a little bit today uh but despite it not being the next technical book in the horus heresy is the next book that delves with argel tall among uh, other people among us as well as the uh world eaters <laughs> chapter um and apparently it's a uh, considered one of if not the best horus heresy book so very excited about that and for merch oh my god dk can you believe it is it time it's time yes it's finally time. We have new merch, and not just a little bit of new merch. We've got a lot of fucking new merch. We've got our big ass, just a little guy collection. It's not one, Let's not go. two, but in fact, four new pieces of merch. Someone was mentioning, or not someone, but maybe people have mentioned they want something a little bit more, a little calmer, you know, just, just a nice little pocket version of the merchandise so there's not anything on the big back it's just a nice pocket and we have taken our just a little guy inquisitor and we've also created our just a little guy ad mech with just a little guy in binary <laughs> you have just a little guy tau also known as just a little good and you've got just a little git for our orc variant they are available in black and white shirts as well as hoodies and there is a special poster to go along with them that includes all four of them together they are all available now little guy collection down in the description orchidate.com it's amazing because little guy memes are great and anyone who thinks yeah. so is cringe so anyway dk our beautiful um american podcast has uh, been infiltrated once again uh, because it seems that no no one can make uh, games workshop content without getting the brits involved Hey, Kiriath, how's it going? Oh, I, it's nice to be out of the wall again. I liked the little window that you installed. That was nice, even if it does only face the toilet, which was a weird choice. But, you know, it's nice to get some fresh air. Listen, man, how many how many people are in the house? You and me, because you're in the wall. And so if I'm going to drop a deuce, there's got to be two. <laughs> That's it. I mean, it's, wow. and also everyone, everyone knows it's better with an audience, right? That's how that works. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if was... your only window is to the toilet, are you really getting fresh air? Well, it was yeah. really nice when you could commentate on my bowel movements, you know, like a, like an esports commentator. Oh god, I hate that so much. <laughs> oh, god. Throw back to a bit of StarCraft two casting, but just for that, just, just that like oh thing. man, he's morphing into Banelings. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, um, oh, yes, boy. our topic today. So, <laughs> resident. Word bearers, simp, book of Lorgar, um, profiteer, Kirioth is here to uh, assist and provide insight onto our word bearers episode today that always follows from our Primark episodes. Um, we also just finished up the first heretic, so there's much to discuss because if I'm not mistaken, that is your favorite 40k book, right? It is, yeah. I I I read it enough that the covers fell off. So yeah, oh, I, I like I like that one a lot. It became like a almost like a comfort read. Like I didn't want to read something new, but I wanted to read a book, and I just default back to the first heretic because of how good it is. Also, it does have the best worst character in the entirety of forty k, with Erebus being there. So you know, it, it's got a little mm. bit of everything. He doesn't yeah, have too yeah. much of a uh, too much of a of a overall. Um, like presence in the book he's only there for a bit but he is you can feel his yep. you can feel his like creepy underhanded garbage influence kind of throughout though which i quite like essentially anything bad that happens i just put it down to erebus because that's just the that's the vibe he gives you know 
Corferon Corferon was is a, a piece of shit too. I was about to say Corferon's pretty That's fucking true. up there. He's a yeah, real he's bastard. Bad. He's I feel just like, a couple steps below Erebus. Yeah, I, I feel like he's I feel like he's more in your face a piece of shit though. Like he he <laughs> you know, like instantly it's a case of well this guy is clearly awful and we should hate him. Erebus is like he's more slippery than that. He has kind of redeeming moments and he's very chummy. With with everyone else, whereas Corfairon is outwardly just not nice a to people. Douchebag, yeah, yeah, that, that's true. Erebus is underhanded. Corfairon is just a, a flat out douche. No one like in the, <laughs> yeah. even in the beginning when they were sitting on, in the ashes of Anarchia, wasn't it? Zayf who was like, "I don't like that guy." Yeah, Corfairon. <laughs> I, I like that. Just straight away, it's like we know he's a wrong and we know he's got issues. That's uh, just that's all we need. Yep. Yeah, you can do about it because he's 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 little girl's papa, adopted papa, but whatever. Yeah, so I'm actually kind of surprised that uh, first heretic is your number one. I mean, it's a pretty darn good book, but it was it was a very uh, it was a very light book. I mean, it's very long, but it not it's not like too bombastic. It's very it's very like subtle. There's not a whole lot of crazy shit that happens like overall. I, well, I, besides honestly, the think... drop site massacre, but that's like at the end. Yeah, I I think it's there's a lot more there's a lot more focus on like it really explores characters that book. It makes the word bearers like uh, very human compared to some of the other legions, especially Lorgar, like Lorgar being a primarch and being kind of let's be honest an insecure mess. I don't know. I oh, found yeah. that very relatable to be perfectly honest with you. <laughs> so I think a big part of it is like watching this guy clearly struggle with the fact that he's meant for so much more, but he just wants to, he just wants the truth. That's all he wants. He wants yep. honesty. He wants transparency. He wants to know what the deal is. And that makes him incredibly vulnerable to being manipulated and messed with, which he is throughout. But oh, I don't yeah. know. I really like that. I really like that aspect of it. It feels like quite a calm book in terms of how much like fighting and how many battles and how much action there is but it it really goes pretty it goes pretty hard into what makes the word bearers the word bearers which i really like yeah it does i mean when you have your faith completely broken and shattered and burned to ashes you're gonna be a little vulnerable you know? yeah you're gonna be a little yeah definitely just a it little does, vulnerable just 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 a, just a little Vulnerable, just a little vulnerable. Not a it's lot like, of vulnerable, just a little vulnerable. He, he, just a little be a nice bit. shirt. Just the next vulnerable. <laughs> just the next. Just a, just a, just a little vulnerable, and it's just Lorgar's with his like little uh, Illuminor mace. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I did. I did enjoy the little flashback they had with Ferris Manus. Ferris Manus, like, here's this mace for helping me. I don't much like you. Bye. <laughs> yeah. Get the yeah. Fuck out of here. There's a there's one extra like the exchange from that where Lorgar says one wonders if you is it one wonders if you're capable of creating rather than destroying or something along those lines and and Ferris just goes one wonders if you're capable of anything worthy at all it's just like ouch wow harsh yeah, just wrecked. shut your brother down like that Jesus oh we're, we're getting cat called by Shy she said well maybe you should explain what word bears are because this isn't the fucking book club episode this is absolutely the, the, the first heretic is yeah. absolutely the word bearers episode. Okay, it is absolutely that is one hundred percent. Also, I, I think I remember this good. Um, there's a good quote by Gilliman who talks about Lorgar or something, and he's like not mean to Lorgar over, overly, but he's like, yeah, he, he's he's passionate, like got zeal, quick to anger, like a child. It's like <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, oh, oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. <laughs> yeah, Fine, we'll Lord. talk about the fucking word bearers on the fucking word bearers episode. <laughs> Fine. We we were talking about the word bearers, to be fair. That's all that book is about, is basically how they turn to chaos. It is. It's so, uh, well, you know, word bearers, 17th Legion, Primarch Lorgar, currently demon Primarch Lorgar, which has been horrendously underrepresented, I must admit. It's because he hasn't yeah. done anything. <laughs> he he just, sat in his tower. He just literally, what's it? Oh, what is it called? The Templum Inficio, I think is mm -hmm. what it's called. He's, he's just big temple on a demon world where he just sits there, I guess, and worships chaos. And I mean, that's 
I think that's pretty much mostly what he's done. I think he's opened a couple of portals, if I remember right. But apart from that, he's he's kind of languished a bit since the heresy. He just took his toys, went home, and has been sitting there ever since, having a good old praying session. He, he is well, kind of doing I mean, the monk thing. He is, yeah. He is. His whole thing seemed to be like, oh no, I don't have anyone to worship anymore. What am I going to... And that's what kind of like spurred him into motion, you know? And then he found his thing to worship, and he's like, well, I don't need to fight anymore. Because he's... Um, Lorgar seems to not be a great fighter, because uh, that just doesn't seem to be his shtick. Uh, so he's just like, I don't need to fight. I'm just going to worship chaos, you know? I mean, like, yeah, he's still like a primarch. You. He's still like a primarch. Yeah. He can fight pretty fucking well. He just... I if mean, you were, if yeah, you were if he's to take fighting him non Primarchs. In, yeah, if you were to take him to 1v1 any other Primarch, he'd probably lose. Yeah. yeah although, you do, you do, uh, you do Lorgar Ascended out of the, well, the previous Horus Heresy rule set and give him the right stuff, and he can go toe to toe pretty much everyone. But that's cheating because that's when he's got all his mad psychic nonsense that he spent most of his life without, let's be honest. Mm. The entire Great Crusade, <laughs> he had no idea what the hell he was doing. Which <laughs> I kept on hearing again, like, voices calling his name, and he's like, "Stop! You put, yeah. put him away." <laughs> the um the demon world, ever. the demon world you mentioned, I, I have that here. It was called it's called Sakaris, I believe, and I remember reading a little bit about how the the atmosphere is fire and blood, um because of course oh. it is, uh, it is how? it it is a a rolling sky of fire and blood. Covered oh. in in cathedrals, temples. Uh, sorry, the atmosphere is not sky and blood. The sky is fire and blood. Like, like How you're not breathing in work? fire and blood. It's it's a demon world. It's in, it's in uh, the demon fucking... worlds. Yeah. They, they don't they don't like they don't do the whole like the normal physics. Clouds of, of physics. fire, rain of blood. Is that that type of thing? <laughs> like pretty shit. much. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, okay. there's a demon world that is a giant dude in a ball. The, oh, the, we what? haven't talked about we haven't talked about the dude in the ball yet. <laughs> we haven't talked about that demon world yet. Okay, so I, I, I want to. I want to ask Sinesh what you're one, talking right? about. But that, I really don't want to spoil that episode because yeah, what? that needs that needs to be a that needs to be a whole thing in an episode dedicated to that sort of thing. But but it's a great example of how demon worlds don't really they're not like they don't respond to physics properly. So you can have worlds that are. For instance, the sky is made of fire and it rains blood constantly, but you can still walk around and breathe and you're perfectly fine because demon world, you can do what you like. Fair enough. Yeah. I mean, I guess there are probably going to be too many humans on that world anyway, so you just got... Fucking oh, you and... would be surprised. Oh, you are wrong. <laughs> oh, well, I guess, I guess like human slaves and torture victims. Shit okay, like now, now, now you're right. Here's a... Yep. They have a photo of it uh, down here that you yeah. want to click okay. on. The, um... Yeah, uh, good old good old uh, Sakaris has Holy millions shit. upon millions upon millions of slaves um, because they have to toil and build their gigantic cathedrals and spires to the dark gods because word bearers. Wow, that is a hell of an image. Yeah, yeah. That's what, God, <laughs> pretty cool. It's pretty cool, right? Uh, yeah, that I mean that's that's pretty metal. That looks like it could very easily be the cover of some like death metal band's uh, new. Uh, single they even have bats in the air yeah they even have bats in the air Ah, that's that sky doesn't look like it's on fire though it doesn't look like it's raining blood yeah but look but look the temple on the top right has a face and it's very mad (laughs) 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 he's he's, he's shouting uh sermons from lorgar but but yeah lorgar is in the was a temp templum inficio He's just been in there for the last 10,000 years, kind of waiting and, and praying and like constant uh, contemplation uh, and also being bothered by uh, Corvus Corax mm. for, for a little bit. And, uh, Man, Corvus and but Corax I think. bodied the shit out of him. I, I think he's out. I don't. I think in current 40K, he's out back in real space leading crusades. Yeah, I think he. I think he is actually. I think he's finally got off his ass and he is doing things now. But he's not really properly like shown up in the way that like Magnus or Mortarian has, um, or the way that Angron's going to. But yeah, I. It's a bit. The whole like that whole demon world is is great because it talks about how uh, it talks about how 
they are constantly raising like cathedrals and temples and churches and all sorts of things for devotion and worship but because they keep raising new structures the structures are like building on existing ones so like the majority of of buildings on that planet are like subterranean they're technically like below ground because other cathedrals have been built on top of the ones that already existed endlessly which makes it so much worse than it would otherwise be because <laughs> it means yeah. the guys building this stuff like the millions upon millions of humans who are having to do this work i'm assuming when they're not working if they're ever not working they just live in the dark underground in stuff that the previous wave of slaves built before they all died and this lot arrived to just build more stuff on top which is i mean that's that's like that's peak word bearers right just building cathedrals endlessly yeah. on top of each other gonna say that's just peak 40k in general building cathedrals on top of cathedrals and why does your well, ship that, have so many the... cathedrals on it because fuck you that's the fun part about the word bearers though is they're like the word bearers are act really similar to for modern 40k loyalist because the loyalists have have degraded like um have really gone downhill overall mm -hmm. with their legion and beliefs because the word bearers were the ones that have like chaplains and chapters and, and and all and all these cathedrals and shit and then now they're like dark apostles instead of chaplains and, and the like but now regular 40k uh chapters have chaplains and, and their bases are giant fortress cathedrals and shit and they're made out of chapters instead of uh legions and it's yeah. they're kind of like the they're kind of just just like the they're probably the most similar in how they operate or not operate, but like like their um, what's it called? Uh, like their their well, approach to worship yeah. and devotion, and you just worship other things instead of instead of having like servitors and and the like. You have crazed out lunatics with chaos icons and a giant flaming book. Look, that that guy's book is burning and it's also so bleeding. Good. <laughs> It is. Oh, that's a, who is that? What, what is it? Just a word bear? It's a is dark that, apostle. That yeah. Oh, just a the, dark apostle. That's okay. the the new like dark apostle model with his uh, with his cultists. I love the guy with the book. A big loudspeaker that's been sewn into his face. <laughs> it's so bad. I, I, really I, like I love those. Videos. Those are great. Yeah, the Dark Apostles is a really good new kit, and also uh, in the ninth edition 40k, they are very good. Um, yeah, we're gonna be seeing are. some word bearer uh, armies popping up. Word bearers might be the strongest army in the game, or for CSM right now. They are okay. laughably powerful, as oh, it should cool. be. <laughs> they they are ludicrous. The only army that comes even close is Black Legion, and I think that's only because of Abaddon, because Abaddon is a bad man. I always feel so bad for Abaddon. He always gets shit on so hard. He's not going to get cool. shit on in game anymore. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. the Despoiler. Oh, Shai has, Shai has a quote. Uh, Usually the untimely death of a dark apostle is marked with a great loss and weeks of ceremonies are held in his commemoration. In the time the captains of the dead apostles' hosts are summarily executed for allowing such a thing to happen. Aw, oh, these <laughs> guys are so sweet. <laughs> it's so good. How, it's how so good. How dare you let our, our, our priest die. Die. <laughs> yep. <laughs> How dare you let the priest die. Now you die. Go join him in the afterlife. Yep. Which, I mean, given how backstabbing and and just overall not all that good with authority, like Chaos Space Marines in general are, but especially word bearers, like word bearers have got a real issue with people trying to... Uh, what's what's the what's the phrase like trying to just get themselves up to the top so there's a there's a series of books called the word bearers omnibus which is really really good that has a dark apostle called marduk in it and he just outright betrays his dark apostle like he is he oh. is the he is being mentored he is he is kind of subordinate to him and he just full on backstabs him because he's got his own bit of prophecy that has appeared on his skin that kind of dictates that he's going to be a Dark Apostle. It's been a while since I've read them, but I remember them being really, really good and really just the power struggles that word bearers go through. Just so trying to one-up each other. 
Damn. So he's killing his way up the corporate ladder is basically what I'm hearing. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. I mean, Corferon and Erebus are still in charge. Oh, fuck them. So they are constantly going against each other and trying to wrest control of the Dark Council. So the Dark Council are the, uh, are the ones, like, in charge of the word bearers, kind of. It's the ruling body of Sycharis, the uh, the demon world that they live on. Um, but Lord Erebus and Corfairon, funnily enough, top of the ladder for that. <laughs> so oh. they're constantly trying to constantly trying to take control overall from each other. And you saying the word Lord Erebus, I don't know why, but that just like rubbed me the wrong way. <laughs> I <laughs> the, the words Lord Erebus. I'm like, oh Lord my God. Erebus, yep. Yeah, I mean it's his official title. It's in the it's in the it's in the omnibus. He's officially Lord Erebus. He doesn't deserve it, but he is. Um, whereas Corfairon is the Keeper of the Faith, which is a badass title. That let's is not, very let's badass. Not forget, uh, let's not forget our good boy Argel Tall, leader of the Gal Vorbeck. What a guy! Hey. What, what a guy! guy. What a he guy! Got, he got done I, dirty. I, I, I know what happens to Argel Tall, and DK doesn't know, so don't spoil it for him, but I know yeah, what happens. Yeah, I don't know and, yet. And man! And oh man. man! Apparently oh I'm man. in for some some disappointing death, uh, which is very funny. <laughs> uh, I was going to say, the prophecy appearing in your skin seems like the most... <laughs> Seems like the most 40k chaos thing. It's it's it, it tracks. It tracks very well for the word bears being chaos. Oh yeah. Prophecy it's... shows up on your skin. Kill, kill the person above you, and it's like, oh wow, that that. <laughs> yep. It's it's okay. pretty full on. I mean, the, like the the whole background to uh, mm. to that character story is, I mean, like we said, peak word bearers earlier. It is. It's insane what the word bearers will do to honor the chaos gods. So it's in the in the omnibus. The first book deals with a planet called Tanacreg, and the word bearers show up and start annihilating everyone because there's only a local like planetary defense force. There's nothing particularly. There's nothing like that's a massive threat to the word bearers, so they're able to just go in and annihilate the planet and take millions of slaves. And they use the slaves and the ruins of the capital city and the bodies of the dead to build a tower, which I can't... Oh. I'm going to try and pronounce this. It's going to be wrong, and I'm sure someone <clears throat> in the comments will be able to correct, but the tower is a... a... Gehemehnet. <laughs> I don't... Look, Whoa, I, I, I didn't write it. <laughs> um, which is like a sentient living structure. Oh no! Which I gather from the books. Are, I mean, it's supposed to turn the planet into a demon world. So this is something that is used to actually take a normal planet and turn it into a demon world. Um, but in this case, was used to expose a bit of Necron artifact nonsense. Um, but it that's like the back. That's just the backdrop to this. Like it's that's the it's like to kick off Marduk's like journey and how he becomes what he becomes and all his adventures afterwards. The starting point is the word bearers show up to a planet, wreck everything, enslave the population, and build a giant sentient tower out of the ruins of the capital city and all of the dead people. And uh, and build a colossal tower to turn it into a demon planet, and that's just like that's the background, which is wow. mental. <laughs> I, Again, I, very very on on brand for forty k chaos though. That's mm. it's about as on brand as you can be. I was about to say I I remember I have it here that the dark apostles will very often ca uh, carry large quantities of the Book of Lorgar that they genuinely hand out to the fucking slaves that they have captured from the world. <laughs> like, when they go to a new world and they take it over, they hand out the Book of Lorgar to tra to transfer its citizens into uh, chaos worshippers. Right. So, I don't know, it's just, I I'm looking at that, that dude Shy posted who has more spikes than a goddamn... Um, Hedgehog. Indiana, I don't know, Indiana Jones movie, whatever the hell. Hedgehog, sure. Uh, and I'm just imagining him with a fucking book of Lorgar, like, here you go. Read. <laughs> Have you heard the word of our Lord and Savior, Lorgar? 
breeder, I'm no. actually going to, or I'm actually going to like carve runes into your body and sacrifice you. The Jehovah's also, Witnesses of Warhammer 40k. Hell yeah, yeah. Except, you, except you're not laughing at these guys. You're not gonna. <laughs> yeah, True. Uh, fair. Yeah. I'm kind of curious because the word bearers like they didn't go into Chaos's arms super willingly. Like they kind of did, but they they were kind of trying to keep their own version of humanity and stuff. It wasn't really until like the Gal Vorback and, and Argel Tall's possession that they started to really get into that kind of shit. Do you yeah. think like Kirioth, Do you think that like just over the last ten thousand years, it's kind of kind of slowly gotten more and more chaos depraved, and that's why they're the way they are. So from like the Horus Heresy books and like the the Wordbearers Omnibus and stuff, the overall impression that I get of the Wordbearers is that they are like they are like effectively super committed. So like when they were spreading the imperial truth and they were talking about the emperor being a god, which he refused and didn't want people to think he was a god, they like they buy in a hundred percent. So when they were loyal mm. to the Imperium, they were like super super loyal they would spend ages on planets they'd conquered they would convert the population mm -hmm. to effectively worshiping the emperor as a god and then when they moved on their planets and their conquests had like a really high rate of loyalty so whilst other planets might have gone back against the imperial creed and they might have rebelled or there might have been unrest basically the word barrier would show up they would indoctrinate the entire population, not just now, but forever, effectively, and then then move on. So they were super slow at conquering planets, yeah. but any planet they conquered, it stayed conquered because they were all in. By the time the word bearers left, they were worshipping the space marines. Like, Monarchy is a great example of, like, referring to his angels and treating the emperor as a god. So... I feel like when they found something that actually appreciated them in the way that in the way the chaos gods did because the emperor always pushed back and was always like no I'm not a god I'm not a god cut that out and then did the whole monarchia demonstration of you cannot tell people that I am a god this is not how the imperium works when yeah. they found the chaos gods and they found something that actually reciprocated their worship and granted them like exceptional exceptional abilities that was when this that was when like the slide started just the slide into being full-on literally like murder torturers yeah, like yeah. even things like working out rituals for getting power from the chaos gods and there's like notes in i can't remember which book of the horus heresy it is but there is a specific it might have been chaplain zaphon actually it might have actually been in the first heretic i can't remember exactly where it is but there's a note about how if you are sacrificing someone, a person who's willing to be sacrificed gains less power than yes. someone who doesn't want to be sacrificed. Yes, oh, I remember no. that. They, they mentioned that <laughs> oh, in, the, in the Book no. of Lorgar, because they, yeah. they weren't getting as much chaos power or like uh, demonic summonings from people who were willing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no. That's and, like oof. the fact that like that chaplain slipped into that so quickly. It's almost like once you give them the permission, once Lorgar is like, okay, this is what we're doing, the entire legion, to an extent, I mean, there's outliers and there's like loyalists who never turned to chaos and hated what the word barriers became, but for the most part, the legion as a whole just went, oh, okay, so gods do exist. They do like being worshipped. And if we if we do things a certain way, we will be rewarded. Okay, we're in. And then it just gets worse and worse from that point on. Yeah. And they're I, not I wrong. Really, yeah. I I really like the idea of the word bearers just being like really committed to what they worship in. Like they're in one hundred percent. Cause I kind of just thought they were like, oh, they're just space marines. Hey, space marines following the doctrine. But it's like, no, they're just like super dedicated to whatever cause they're following. And well, that's why they were so ardent about like their emperor worship and why they're so ardent about chaos. Now that chaos yeah. is answering them and reciprocating, of course they're going to go all in fucking batshit crazy because someone finally is like, hey, good job. Yeah, well done. Yeah. 
that that's like the suit. interesting that's the interesting thing too because like very often before they fight or before a big battle or something they will take slaves or or like captured um enemy combatants or enemy space marines and they'll fucking carve runes and demonic rituals into their skin and they'll they'll get an answer they'll they'll suit like often word bearers fight alongside demons uh because before a battle they'll do a goddamn ritual and it works and ten thousand yeah. years of that shit working like they're gonna put more some more and more spikes on their armor <laughs> yeah, yeah. someone's finally answering my prayers and not burning down my home wow <laughs> this is great my monarchia oh no <laughs> I can I can see how how word bearers would be very easily manipulated and corrupted by chaos. It just I takes think, a little push. I think also I, again I I can't remember whether it's in the first heretic or one of the one of the like other books that deals with the word bearers. There is like discussion as to what each of the legions has or what like the sons of the primarchs have in terms of their special thing because you know oh, each the, legion um... has got its own like thing that it does better than anyone else. Um, or like a genetic predisposition to something, and yeah, in the one of them, thing. yeah, in one of them it talks about like the word bearers. The word bearers thing is loyalty. So yeah. when when the legion turned to chaos, like relative to how big the legion was, very few went against that turn, and very few decided to stay loyalist. And there's like a question of well, is it because we are genetically we are like genetically predisposed to be loyal to Lorgar and so Lorgar fell so we had no choice but to fall because that's how, what we were built to do there's a there's like that kind of question in one of the books which I really like that again it's one of those things I really like about word bearers where it's did they do it of their own accord was it a flaw that was built into them was it not oh. a flaw, but they've convinced themselves that it was, and now they're leaning into it because it's far easier to be, you know, ritual torturers and sacrifices of innocence if that's just how it was always going to be? Yeah. Uh, Shai said you can also see that with other Primarchs too, like Word Eaters, or World Eaters. God, I get those two fucked up all the time. World Eaters were willing to carve their own brains out just to make their dad love them. Oh, it's it's, tr it's tr the world. The world eaters are just properly tragic. Like even by the standard yeah, of forty k. Yeah, even by chaos standards, uh, world eaters are. Oh, that's, that's just so sad. A, an entire Everything. legion of daddy issues. Basically, it was just why. Do, yeah. Why doesn't father love us? If we if we destroy <laughs> our own brains, will he love us then? It's like no, he still <laughs> hates all of you. Oh, yep. but we've ruined everything now. It's so. It's really sad. But I'm cupping my brains in my hand like a good boy. <laughs> Man, that's some shit. Yeah, that's 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 some hard shit. Some that's hard that, shit. that that's some shit. The word the world leaders. We, we did the world leaders episodes for a bit. We talked about uh, we talked about Karn. Oh, Karn. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, Karn loving to flamethrower his own people. Yeah. You, hey man, they don't call him the betrayer for no reason. <laughs> they call him the betrayer because of those fucking gains. Is why he's, he's got that that big <laughs> arm. That go yeah. lightweight, baby. Lightweight. You yes, do. Damn. You do. You have that to look forward to in betrayer, though, because you've got uh, the yes. Argel Talon Khan bromance, which is it's so good. It's so good. We get a, get a lot of things in that. A buddy of mine was telling me that one of the best parts of that book was um, something about Lorgar and Angron finding a dude on a chair. I got a throne. Some some scene involving that that's apparently very good. It's um, it's honestly I I'd probably put it at number two behind First Heretic, but I'm willing to admit that my my biases make First Heretic like my my top of all the Horus Heresy. But if we're being objective, it probably would be Betrayer at the top. Because Ooh. it's just that good. Damn. But the thing is I've I have like a I don't know, like First Heretic is it's like the comfort read. It's the one I always go to. But Betrayer is yeah. it's so good. I I don't mean to make this a first heretic talk again, but how did you feel about the, the twist where it's the Emperor communing communing talking to demons and learning how to make his sons and then his sons are the ones that kill the Gellerfield and that's why all the Primarchs get yeeted by chaos. I, I have to admit I really liked that. 
I just like yeah. the idea that you you mess with something you don't fully understand, no matter how smart you might be, you're you clearly were not that ah. smart. And yeah. thinking that you are above all of that was it was like the fatal mistake. It's like there's there's oh, a billion no, things it's the you could have done. Consequences of my actions. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. I I I actually quite liked it. I thought it was a nice twist. It it was way better than like, ooh, random accident. Instead it's like, oh no, no. You double back on the deal and now everything that you wanted is gonna get taken away from you because yeah. you thought you were smarter than you actually were. Which I mean, to be honest, when you look at the Emperor's performance as a whole, you thought you were smarter than you actually were kind of sums up the whole thing, really. Yeah. It just kind of hammers yeah, it, it home a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Shay. <laughs> oh, didn't mean, oh, didn't mean oh, to turn it back pl- into a book club. I'm oh, sorry. please. <laughs> like our Night Lords episode wasn't just covering the omnibus the whole goddamn time. <laughs> It's well, true. That's, that's, that, well, I mean, you got him. The brick's got a point. Uh, the brick is having a point here. Kirath, have you read yeah. the Night Lord's Omnibus? I confession time. I've not read it yet. No. Oh, that's why you like Word Bears more. All right. <laughs> 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 it's really fucking good. Um. Anyway, that, that's that's so a side. What, yeah. What, what what else we got on the Word Bears? What what well what else we got? Well, uh, so there's the word bearers notable characters, which we know pretty much all of. Uh, it's mm-hmm. Erebus, Corferon, Lorgar, Argel Tall, and um, it's, not, it's not really I, I, the guy from your omnibus book. I forget his name that you mentioned. So there's uh, there's Argel Tall, there's Zardu Lyak as well. He's a really cool guy. Um, Erebus, Corferon, Marduk. That was the other one. Yeah, Marduk. Uh, Ikodos. E- 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 Ikodas seems to be one of them. There's uh, yeah, I mean, there's, there's plenty I, of names, but like Marduk is the yeah Marduk is the guy that you're referring to from the yeah. Uh, I book. believe uh, I, I won't I won't say anything about Ikodas because I believe that's a massive spoiler if you read the omnibus. So I'll keep my mouth shut. But um, wait, there wait is, a minute. That picture that Shy posted is, is of him. That he's holding the the skull in his hand. That's him. That wow, he looks I, like a fucker. Holding the helmet of a white consul to Stardi during the Battle of the Boros Gate. Yeah, Shai said that is Marduk. <laughs> That's yeah, the he's... main character of the book? Jesus Christ. He's, he's hardcore. He is hardcore. <laughs> he's great. Oh my god. I, I clicked yeah, on him on the, on the wiki and he's got a... He's got a long quote. He is the... He, he looks like the quintessential Chaos Space Marine. You know, he really uh, does, actually. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I want to I read this quote real quick. It's long, but I, this looks fun. <clears throat> Unto those who in ignorance and stubbornness refuse the word, bring the fires of hell, sunder their flesh, and burn them of their impurity. Take vengeance upon them for their failings, and teach them the weakness of false idols. Thus spoke Lorgar, and so it shall be done. Open their veins, that the truth might enter them. Cut open them and let their blood flow. With holy bolter and chain sword, we shall slaughter the unbelievers and usher the word of truth into the world. Great powers of the warp, guide the arms of your servants. They might let the blood of your enemies in your honor. Gird us with strength and fortitude to do your bidding and let our faith protect us from the blows of the faithless. Let your dark light shine upon us, filling us with purpose and belief. With thanks, we give ourselves unto you, pledging body and soul to your glory for now and for time immaterial. Glory be. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Can oh, I get an amen? I was about so to say, good. this does sound like a this does sound like a loyalist speech. Just remove powers of the warp with the god emperor. Yeah. It's about the same. Oh it's, yeah, it's a I chaos mean chaos space rain sermon. Yeah. Well, when you think that the like when the word bearers were loyalist, they were spreading the uh, I always forget how to pronounce it. The lecticio divinit lecticio divinitatis. That's it. Um, they were spreading that as a form of the Emperor is a god. Given that the Lacticio like, Divinitatis is basically the foundation of the Imperial faith, like it's it's what the Imperium believes, essentially, at this stage. 
So what Lorgar and his legion were teaching during the Great Crusade, that became the foundation of what keeps the Imperium alive. Which, I mean, in a way, you could say the word bearers were right all along on two fronts. That that is the foundation of what makes the Imperium what it is, and that gods exist, are real, and can be approached for favour. They just didn't they just didn't quite mix the two properly. So now we have, you know, people being sacrificed, giant towers being built that are sentient and turning things into demon worlds. You know, all sorts of all sorts of horrific nightmares um for the word bearers, whereas the Imperium is still operating on basically what Lorgar believed in the first place. Yeah, just because I, I Lorgar will, is will... right doesn't mean I'm going to give him the satisfaction. <laughs> I was about to ask, how exactly does Lorgar feel about the Imperium right now? Because, like, obviously, he and the Word Bears are fully 100%. Ooh, Chaos listens to me. Um, but, like, does he feel any, like, um, I don't know if I want to say regret or any sort of, like, hesitations? Because, like, oh, everybody's finally believing that the Emperor's a god, like I tried to preach however long ago, it, it, like, does he kind of feel like, oh, no, I chose the wrong, like, you know, any I, any honestly, sort of... Honestly, I would love them to actually explore Lorgar a bit, like, post-heresy in, like, current times. Like, he's... I know that at some point he kind of addresses it as, like, an ironic thing of, oh, well, that's all the stuff that I wrote. Funny how they're using it now. But, like, yeah. I would I would really love them to actually do something with him finally with all the other demon primarchs and actually mm -hmm. explore how he feels about it because when it comes to the word bearers they're all like the false god or the or the the corpse or the corpse god or the you know the false emperor all of that sort of thing i feel like lorgar would probably be a bit more a bit more like i don't know accepting almost of it like oh yeah no i was dead on i was absolutely yeah. correct yeah. and if anything, if anything, everything I said was right and no one listened to me when they should have done. Like, more of an yeah. acceptance thing, I feel like you get out of him. Do you, like, do you think you would have any regret at all? Like, oh no, I shouldn't have joined Chaos. Now everybody believes like I do in the Imperium? Or do you think that was all just kind of like stomped out with the whole Monarchia thing? And he's just like, yeah, fuck it, I moved on, Chaos. Woohoo. I, to be honest, personally, I think he would probably still stick by what he did, because it's still the truth. The whole thing that with, like, that's the, true. The yeah, yeah. The, the, the chaos overarch... gods are the truth. It's the primordial truth. Right? Yeah, it's like the overarching thing throughout the first heretic is just being search of the truth. And even if the truth mm -hmm. is something that you don't like, you still need to tell people about it. I think he would still regard it as like, well, okay, my entire legion are demon worshipping psychopaths who, you know, summon summon the never born into the physical <laughs> realm and enslave millions but i was absolutely dead on there are gods i was completely yeah. correct and they are what i thought they were so i don't know what do you reckon bricky you know the concept that lorgar is like wow we're like slaughtering millions to the gods but i'm right makes him a prick that's that's also fair, yeah. <laughs> Makes him just like, yeah, but I'm right though. All right, put that eight pointed star on that guy's forehead and cut off his dick. It's time to send him to Slanesh. <laughs> like, I, I I don't I don't know. It doesn't it doesn't quite work out for me. Um, I think I think like because remember in uh, in the first Heretic when Arjo Tall saw the um, uh, the sacrifice on Cadia, uh, oh. and he was like, this is disgusting. Like, what you did was awful. I don't hate you for it, Dad, but fuck you, kind of, little, sort of. Yeah, um, yeah. I, like, that has obviously... That mindset is gone. That mindset is is nowhere to be found. 10,000 yeah. years later, they have slid right down into it. And I don't know, like... Because we, we talk a lot about how the Chaos Gods represent both emotions, good and bad, or, like, martial, like, corn is murder, but also, like, martial legacy, that kind of shit. Um, but the Chaos Gods are, are, at least in our moral compass, still pretty evil because they've been so, like, the tides of the warbeds have been turned and 
adjusted because of the war in heaven if we're taking that canon as canon mm -hmm. um they're definitely worse than they were yeah because there are gods of death and i don't know i, I guess maybe ten thousand years makes you lose a little bit of uh self-awareness but <laughs> yeah <laughs> or maybe they just really want a god to worship maybe they don't get they don't give yeah. a fuck if the god is okay or not it's it's just there's worth a god worthy. that's answering me and it's worship me yeah yeah I, I there's worship there's worthy. something to yeah it's it's answering it matters that it answers more than it than it's yeah. Um, malignant yeah yeah Shai, I, Shai was saying earlier like the uh sort of irl christian god doesn't necessarily talk to anyone and yet people are willing to do a lot of extremist things for that so there's something to be said about commitment to worshiping a god that literally responds to your prayers yeah even if it is a nightmare demon god that wants you to kill everything and splay them on spikes and there is like there's also something to be said like going back to the the question of like built in like genetic loyalty would logar mm. and the word bearers even be as invested as they are into the chaos gods if they weren't predisposed to it. Like, if that wasn't part of their makeup, if that is a thing that is definitely something that was engineered within them to latch onto something and give it 100% of their commitment and, and like, energy, would they have even gone that hard into it? Or would they have rebelled back towards the god emperor, even if he didn't want to be called that? Like, there's... It's one of the things that I... I think it's probably why the word bearers are my favourite legion for, like, the Horus Heresy specifically. I do like them in 40k, but for, like, the Horus Heresy, they're, like... They're, they're pretty much my absolute favourite. There's so mm. many questions where it's, like, how much of it was engineered? How much of it was down to one or two bad, you know, bad influences taking the naivety and desire for acceptance from a powerful figure and running with it like there's so many different things because it's not as simple as just oh the chaos gods are real so they were like yeah let's go it's so much more underhand and manipulative and there are so many other like questions about why they ended up slipping that far and that quickly it just mm -hmm. makes it like i don't know it makes them super interesting because of all the of all the different legions they feel like the most the most uncertain almost like when you look at the death guard the death guard know exactly what they are and what they do the white scars exactly the same when you look at the ultramarines they polish their armor too much and then get told off for it <laughs> like there's there's like it feels like everyone else is cemented in what they are and what they do and the the primarchs that question themselves the most are the ones that seem to end up falling to chaos and it feels like it's because they're the most human. So you end up with Horus trying to not be like his father and not just conquer every planet he comes across and actually broker peace with humans who have also ended up mutating and being a bit weird like the Interrex. Or you end up with Fulgrim wanting to be more and better than he is at that time. You know, Mortarian, who's got all sorts of issues about worthiness. Like, it feels mm. like the ones that fall are the ones who are most, like, hung up on certain aspects. And the world had a just... really bad uh, upbringing. Or had a terrible yeah. upbringing. Yeah, that's really... Poor Angron never had a goddamn chance. Like, never. what the hell? No. I don't, he got, I don't, he I don't got think... put on an awful world. Like I don't and, think uh, Kurz had much better either. He never had no. Yeah, Kurz, Kurz no. had no chance either, yeah. He arrived but... in a strong one and people were like, wow, food! <laughs> they tried yeah. to it's him. a baby. Ow, <laughs> yeah. Mom. yeah, and then he and then he killed them and ate them instead. And he's like, "All right, yeah. he's fucked. Yeah. Write him off." <laughs> Bertrabo was closer. His dad was a little bit of a dick, but Bertrabo was also cursed with seeing the Eye of Terror for like all eternity, even when his eyes were yeah. closed. Yeah, yeah, that's rough. That's a. Uh... I feel like as 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 Primarchs who get passes go, Angron is top of the list. Like I yeah. I actually don't think you can be. I don't think you can look at Angron and not just be sympathetic because he was actually altered physically. He had his brain messed with. What are you going to yeah. do? Like, there was no way to remove them. There was no way to nullify them. That was it. As soon as he landed on that planet, that was how that was going to go. And of all of them, it's like, well, Angron, I can just give a pass to because he never he had, had a chance. There was, had, there was nothing he could have done different. Yeah, he to had make his no situation better. Say. 
from day one, he had no say in yep. how things went. Lorgar is like Lorgar's a bit different because it feels like he did have a say, but he was too too like too obsessed with finding truth and finding something to follow and finding something spiritual in an age where being spiritual yeah. wasn't acceptable. And he was a, he was a bit naive and and also oh, definitely. Oh, also definitely. A, a, abused by the guy He's, who yeah. convinced him to do the things he did, Corferon, so there's also mm -hmm. that part. Oh, uh, yeah, 100%. It's like the emperor was a bad dad. Yeah. Corferon also really shit. Really terrible. Yep, yep. Doesn't, you know, doesn't sound good. Yeah. On, a, on the word bearer side of things, uh, I actually have the codex here with me right now. Um, and there's some there's some relics in here that I think we should mention, because I like to mention some of the relics because they're really funny. Okay. Uh, just because they're so fucking awful. Um, <laughs> for, for example, we have here the Malefic Tome. <clears throat> the Blasphemous Tome has been stitched together from the flayed skins of a dozen mortal psychers, these dabblers in the arcane signed their own death warrants, for though they took every precaution in their dealings with demons, they made their locations known to the chaos worshippers who walk the material world at will. Each leathery page still bears the hairs and birthmarks of the book's oh. unwilling oh. donors. God, Their horror at the mistake they've made still emanating from every inch of stolen skin. The book's leaves are inscribed with true names, hexagramic diagrams, and demonic hierarchies that offer the bearer abominable insights into the powers of the warp. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> that's, a, that's a nasty book. That is... Oh, oh Jesus. God. I mean, I, I, I shouldn't be surprised because this is, this is the sort of, like, depraved, chaos -y shit that you always get from 40k, but something about the book that has skin pages with hair and birthmarks is just... It's, it's the birthmarks. The birthmarks it's, it's is the, what yeah, makes really it works. worse. I don't know. Yeah. If it was just the skin and hair, that's bad, but it's like, okay, weird chaos stuff. For some reason, specifying birthmarks, like they've deliberately gone for that part of the body... It's like, oh, where are we yeah. going to take the skin from? Well, he had a birthmark on his stomach. Okay, let's go. That makes it way worse for some reason. Yep. There's oh, a... they have a tattoo. Get that. It's pretty. Get that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cut, cut, cut I that want one that out. one recorded. Yeah, cut the cut tattoo that one out. Stitch, stitch that in. Um, there's another one that called... That birthmark the... looks like a potato. Get it. <laughs> uh, there's another one called the Crown of the Blasphemer. Oh, adorned no. <laughs> with the f adorned with the finger bones of defiant men and anointed oh, with the blood of unbelievers, it attracts the attention of warp entities to the wearer. Whether these demonic creatures are keeping him alive for their own entertainment or because there is some purpose yet to fulfill upon the battlefield, the kingly figure beneath the crown is extremely difficult to harm, as powered blades turn away the last moment by invisible hands and volleys of bullets find themselves snatched into the ether at the last moment. I love it. Wow. I love it. I love like that Like little one. spectral hands, like, grab yes. your sword and yes. throw so it was, away. Is that just, like, a crown of, like, invincibility, basically, that's just made out of, you know, heretic fingers and blood? Well, it's nothing's ever invincible, but... Do you ever watch Elfen Lied? <laughs> Do you ever watch that anime? Oh, so it's, like, vectors? <laughs> oh, yeah. I, that's what that's kind of what I picture. Just like invisible Hell hands yeah. snatching stuff out of the air. Also, also I hate that I immediately got the anime reference. <laughs> yeah, straight away. Nerd. <laughs> it's like vectors, of course I know the anime reference. It's like one of four animes I've watched and you were right there straight away. Yeah, it sure was. <laughs> well, Elfin Lead is a pretty is a, I mean it's a well known one because it's gory and the poor puppy. Anyway. Uh continue with the, the relics. Shy is mm. typing is the most ominous thing I've seen. <laughs> It, Especially it, after talking about anime, round, yeah. Because we mentioned anime, yeah. <laughs> oh, what is this, Shy? I watched, like, one episode of that, and it seemed to be lolly amputee fetish thing. Can you confirm <laughs> or deny this? Oh, that is... Well, I I get where she's coming All right, from you with said the one well, character I don't later. <laughs> the the well is... was, like, guilty. You said there, well, there, guilty. There, there is one pretty young character that does get pretty much amputated and uh, yeah, yeah there's that's, some, that's, that's, that is true there's some not that, great that, stuff in there let's be honest it, yeah elven laid is not a happy anime 
it's yeah there's nothing yeah. anyway word bears eh war bears the uh, the ashen axe is an axe from the <gasps> great crusade of chain axe that was uh, used in the uh, citizens of worlds that rejected compliance as the legion descended into darkness demons of the warp were drawn in feeding off the anguish and misery that its chained blades created the Ashen Axe has become a malefic nexus for the creatures of the Immaterium as enemies of the War Bears find themselves unable to flee from the Axe's blows as claws and talons grasp at their limbs and root them to the spot. In truth, their minds are assailed by the entities of the Aether, circling impatiently for the sole feast the Ashen Axe will deliver. Hell yeah. A solid, yeah, solid, wow, reference, yeah. solid reference to the Ashen Circle, which is a Horus Heresy unit. Um, which again, very word bearers. So the Ashen Circle is literally, <laughs> it's, oh my God, it feels like, it feels weird saying this out loud. So the Ashen Circle was made primarily to destroy other worlds, cultures, learnings, and faith. So this is a unit specifically <laughs> designed, specifically charged with going after like priests, spiritual leaders, going after like works of art relics books that were considered to be like false or opposing to the imperium the ashen circle d literally just jumps in with chain axes and hand flamers burns libraries and everyone in it basically is what they're there for <laughs> which is Whoa. it's it's got some yeah it's it's got some real connotations to be honest yeah de there are definitely some connotations to be had there yep it's yep. not great <laughs> No, it's not. So, more relics, huh? More of those kooky, oh, crazy right. relics, huh? Kooky, let's crazy see. word bears. Let's see. Uh, let's see. What do we What do we got here? Um, you know what? We'll, we'll do, this. We'll do a nice, simple one. We have the Skull of Monarchia. The, ah, the, fun. The, the, the destruction of the perfect city of Monarchia at the hands of the Ultramarines was all but total, as uh, the only ever found skull intact skull of monarchia was found the only intact cranium after the destruction of the perfect city and is now chased with precious metals and protected by a powerful force field and is a, and is used as a as a way to lift the spirits of the word bearers oh so it's just like a it's just like a it's way a, to rally a, the troops it's like the hand of dorn oh okay it's the I, only, I only the... complete skull found in Monarchy, and they're like, oh, thousands oh. and thousands. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, the you know, velvet ropes are parting, the light shines down, it's a skull. Thousands and thousands and thousands of years later, the word bearers still can't let go of Monarchy. <laughs> like, <laughs> wow, remember that city that half of us weren't even here for? Yeah, let's go. <laughs> The, the last one I've got is the Cursed Crozius. Uh, it Ooh. is actually a weapon of one of the original Arch Traders, and it was used in anger to bludgeon an ex-librarian Praetor of the White Scars to death. <laughs> and it still bears the stains of that first ever treacherous kill today. <laughs> oh my god. Discord didn't so, pick it up, man. but I gave a proper, like, like a proper cackle at that. It's so over the top. It's, just, yeah, it's, it's so, a fancy Corosius that was just like beat to death a white scar's librarian. Yeah, it's not yeah. even you've got things like a crown made of finger bones. You've got the you've got a skull from literally the Monarchy, the turning yeah. point of the word bearer's entire existence <laughs> as a legion. And then you've got someone like beat the shit out of this dude with this Crozius. They're they're on a level. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, sacred yeah. relic. <laughs> Beat this dude to death with it. Like, what? Why is that? Why is that that's the like, same as the others? That's that's like a that's like an orc relic. <laughs> it really yeah, is. It's, that it's sounds my more like an orc stick. Thing. Yeah, Shai said it's the legendary beaten stick. Yeah. I, I crushed I mean, twenty humies with this in one go. Beating a white scar to death with it, you know, so that's pretty good. You know, getting the white scar to stand still long enough to beat him. I mean, you know, that's pretty it's good. also like completely. You know? It's also like completely incongruous with Horus Heresy events. Like you could have picked an Ultramarine, maybe. Just like I'm just throwing this out there. Historically, in terms of your great feuds, 
the word bearers versus the ultramarines is it's pretty high up there when it comes yeah. to you know fictional fictional adversaries they had a whole thing the mark of kelf is still a thing and they went instead of like this crosis was used to bludgeon a ultramarines captain who thought he was allies with the word bearers at the moment of betrayal instead it's like yeah we like we beat a white scar to death and uh relic like what why <laughs> why that like I, <laughs> why would you not yeah, go it is, with it is kind of random yeah it feels so like out of out of sync with everything else everything else is like super hardcore and super demonic and then you've got yeah this this dude got like beaten with the croziers he beat the I'm fuck out of him man <laughs> pretty sure hundreds of people would have been beaten with that crozius i don't know why this one is special <laughs> Because it's the it, cursed it, Crozius. <laughs> if, if, that, if that Crozius had been used to beat an Ultramarine, it would be my favorite relic. Well, it was a of rod of office for a founding member of Lorgar's Chaplains. It's an OG okay. Crozius. Oh, wow. What's this shy? The meme squabble in the world building rivalry? <laughs> <laughs> it's fair. It's fair. I've never seen Gilliman ever uh, depicted as the as the, the um, Chad the Chad as opposed to the Soy Jack. Ah, oh, fuck it. Well, Gilliman's interesting. But <laughs> fuck him anyway. Fuck him Gilliman. and the Ultramarines. Gilliman's cool now. Gilliman's cool fine. now because he's an interesting story, Look, and it's like, I, oh my god, I've woken up to the most heretical thing I could ever wake up to. So that like, I'm I'm okay with Gilliman. The the moment that the Ultramarines and Gilliman became okay for me in the wake of. In the wake of certain codexes and certain things that were written, and I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna rag too hard because the author of such things uh, follows me on Twitter and I've had some good <laughs> conversations. Um, but in the wake of all of that, the Horus Heresy really reset the Ultramarines for me. There is a point where they're talking about, well, like there's an Ultramarine who has polished their armor and they've done everything they can, and Gilliman criticizes them he's like you didn't need to polish that hard and the guy goes <laughs> we're ultramarines trying too hard is what we do and gilliman was, is like was, was that fair. actually was that actually his, his actual words trying too hard is what we do it's not that far off. I can't remember the exact quote, oh. but it is pretty much it's it's genuinely. I would have really, really liked if that was the real quotes. It's like trying too hard is what we do. It's yep. really well, close to, to that. Yep. I'm not paraphrasing <laughs> that badly. It's really close to that, and it's like that self awareness and that kind of like, yeah, we kind of try to do what every other legion does, but better. All right, fine, I'll let you off. Like. That is, yeah, uh, I, that reset them in my in my mind. I was like, okay, fine. And then you know, Gilliman coming back and looking at the Imperium and going, "What the what the hell is this? What is this? Why is everyone worshiping the Emperor as a god? Why is everything so messed up? Why is the calendar out of whack?" Which was a great move, by the way. Absolutely mm. stunning move on GW's part, putting it in a black library book that there are multiple calendars and no one knows the time frame for anything genius that is to, some to keep five it, to keep thinking. it as for as 40k yep yep, yep. <laughs> also i gotta read with what shy says virgin kirioth i'm not gonna be mean to this writer because we talked chad adrick nate crowley is literally in chat your second necron book sucks <laughs> <laughs> Well, I no, this no, no. Rain wasn't well, bad. It, hey, it, it, yeah, it was rain just was not as good. As, <laughs> it was not as good as ruin. Underwhelming by comparison, certainly, but not a bad book. Here's here's the thing, Matt Ward, uh, the the guy who wrote the. Oh, you're talking like, Matt Ward. Yeah, he he's had a significant amount of abuse of like his writings about the Ultramarines. Yes, he and, has. The thing is, poor guy. Yeah, the thing is, I kind of I look at all that stuff and I go, he wouldn't have written that without someone higher than him, him going, too. yeah, let's go. Like uh, you, you can blame the author all you like, but it's Games Workshop. There is a hierarchy. There is a, there are levels and levels of authority, and 
if at any point he'd done something he didn't like, they would have gone, no, get rid of it. But they didn't. We'll find someone else who will write it the way we want it. It's, it's yeah. It's, 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 like, it's, the, it's like, like the fucking Disney problem. Like, yeah, Taika Waititi is a goddamn incredible director, but I thought Thor Love and Thunder sucked. And I don't blame Taika Waititi one bit for it. It's like, that's a film that should have been like two hours and 40 minutes. And they were like, no, under two hours or you're fired. It's like, well, what are you going to do? Okay. All right, fine. <laughs> we're this far in. We we can we need to make it two hours, so let's go. Like it's the same thing. It's like you can you can bash the author all you like, but there's it's not the reins are so tightly controlled. Like you have to really be careful what you're writing, and you have to get approval yeah. for so many things. If any of it was not what they wanted, it wouldn't have been in there. That's not how it works in that situation. So if you want to get angry, don't get angry at the dude who is being paid to write it. Get angry at the company that went, actually, actually, I think you'll find we don't like you being this complimentary to anything that isn't Ultramarines. So uh, let's let's change it up, shall we? You know what? Let's let's do. You know, I, you know, I'm just gonna do what I've always been the best at, and that's blame Lorgar. Ah, no, yeah, Lorgar, you no, blame boy. Erebus. Lorgar is my sweet, innocent boy, and I will hear nothing of it. Whoa, ah, whoa, I don't, Li- like, oh, innocent, innocent, naive, right, may- maybe, maybe not naive. innocent, sure. naive, my innocent. sweet, In- naive. Boy. Innocent, How many not... people has he sacrificed to the gods yeah. <laughs> directly? Di- did he do it? In the last oh, ten thousand well, I... years, he, there's no fucking way he hasn't. Oh, oh come on! No well, he didn't way. do it himself. He only commanded his troops to Bullshit. absolutely genocide he the planet. Didn't even, that he, wasn't him. He it didn't was the man that did it. They didn't it. have to listen to him. Can he was in his temple me? having a nice meditation and a nice Bull. prayer. He Shit. didn't ask for none of this. <laughs> it's all Erebus. Everything that went wrong in 40k <laughs> is Erebus's fault. There is no point, one else to blame. It's just Erebus. Point it's not me, my boy's fault. Point to me a statement that says that in the 10,000 years <laughs> on a demonic world, he has not killed someone. Show me where he said it did. Like, show me where it said that he it did kill someone. It appears we are at someone. an impasse. <laughs> That's right, because they haven't written about him since, like, 2001. <laughs> you can't possibly say that he had a hand in any of it. He was just minding his own business, doing a little bit of prayer, a little bit of meditation. It's all Erebus. It's Erebus is all the way down. Hey, Whatever hey, helps you sleep hey Shy, for your information... I'm, I'm glad. Dead. I'm glad that my my favorite Primark is dead. He just he just wanted to he's die. He's not dead. He's not. Yeah, dead. The, if Curse, you're a true Curse night is lord, so dead. he's not dead. If, Off screen Curse death. Is so dead. Off screen death. Bullshit. She he's was. Not dead. She was running with his head. Yep. I Game don't. Shen. I no, still uh, don't see, buy if it. If you read the Night Lord books, you'd know this. I still yeah, don't buy man. it. I still don't but, buy it. Uh, okay, I, don't know. Okay. I feel like Kyr- if Kyr- you're a true the... Night Lords fan, you're happy that Kurz is dead. And also, you want, also, you, you wouldn't want him to be alive. Yeah, you wouldn't. Like that, that's that's the that's the point of the Night Lords book. The first book's called Soul Hunter because the main character is the one who kills the assassin that kills Kurz, and she has this fucking head in her hands. Yep, we and know a bunch of his relics. We know from whichever the what is it was it the Dark Imperium book. The one that came out when ninth or eighth came out, I forget. Um, Dark Imperium's eighth. Eighth. We we know that there are souls in the warp, right? Because Mortarian found his adopted father's soul and tormented it for thousands of years, and then got bored because <laughs> you know. We know that Kurz's soul is out there. I just don't think he's going to give up that easily. If he had the option to reincarnate somehow. I don't think be, you would. Uh, actually, I don't, th- I, don't, you know I don't think you know yeah, how. His, you know, having said that, would be false, and he'd hate it. Having hate said that out life. loud, I think yeah, you're right. I, he would prefer to be dead and right <laughs> than yeah. alive. Dead and, and right, slightly than alive and mistaken. Yeah. So is I'll give nothing you that. <laughs> That's fair. Compared to vindication. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that being said, I, I do want Lorg because now that because I, I know we're gonna have to wait till a Fulgrim mini comes out. 
before we get any other demon primarchs because that's just <sighs> they're gonna go with all the the main chaos gods first because of course um but i, I am now. curious i know you want to okay come on you have to want snake fulgrim at least first like the snake well, fulgrim yeah is i so mean cool. this is the True. thing i'm i'm snake I'm, fulgrim I'm, let's go i'm a hundred percent word bearers for horus heresy i am a hundred percent emperor's children for 40k and look uh, look demon angron's fine but what we really want is Snake Fulgrim. That's what the people want. True. And and not like fine cast bollocks nonsense conversion <laughs> parts for noise marines. Because noise marines are, I think it's fair to say, without a doubt, the coolest thing in the game. I rest yes. my all right, case. All right, we're gonna I will some, accept we're no some arguments to have here. I will accept the old no, school ones, no right? Arguments. The ones with the leopard print and the rainbow colored mohawk. Those ones. I, right? <laughs> yeah, that's those what are I the best want. ones. I want Fulgrim Snake, as Shy says. That's what I want. Hey, all right. don't all we right. all though? I mean... This is this has been an hour and thirteen minutes. We need to wrap this shit up. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, yeah, we we do. Oh man, poor Shy. <laughs> it's just another one of those episodes where it's like, ooh, sorry, Shy. It's ooh, weird how I'm not sorry. Ooh. Weird how this weird how this mostly happens when I'm here. Sorry, Shy. I mean, I'm not that sorry. We're gonna tell when I finally have a discussion about Emperor's Children. I want to find out what the fuck happens in that theater because I don't know what happens in that theater, and I want to know what happens in that fucking theater because something happened in that theater. <laughs> hey, Shy, this episode was one hundred percent. She said great episode, like twenty percent of it was about word. It was all word. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. I'll give you two percent of the legions, but most of it, like ninety-eight percent, word bearers. You can't you say the first heretic isn't about word bearers because that's it's the whole point of the book. about word bearers yeah there's like a little bit of adeptus custodies in there but like mm -hmm. who cares about them they got i'll oh, shut up <laughs> i was gonna spoiler it mind you if people have watched this and have not watched the book club watch that so yes i do i do think the custodies went out a little too easy i feel like they could have done a little stronger but you know yeah, custodians. I mean, realistically, they should have wiped them out, but you know, <laughs> yeah, I'll take it because Argyle Town is badass. The custodians did have some badass. All right, badass all right, moments. God, all right, yeah, yeah, God yeah, go ahead, it. Bricky, Bricky, take God. us home. All right, Shy, pull out the gun, kill us all. I just wanna make it last Try to let go of the past I close my eyes, embrace the blast Sleepless nights and headaches stack Restlessness to hell and back What's my purpose, what do I grab? A slippery surface, a heart attack And sometimes you just gotta believe There's something that'll give you relief There's something that'll have what you need What you need we're broken, it's tragic, we're not all elastic But maybe there's magic, believe you could have it And I know of sadness, the anxious and panic The infinite vastness of 